Hello again, I'm Becky and today we're going to be taking a pressure sensor into a little inflatable pillow. I'll show you what that means. <laughs> this is a pressure sensor that I have soldered onto a set of wires that will be sticking out of the inflatable form so that I can monitor the pressure on the inside and make my electric pump respond to it actively. I have a whole breadboard set up to use with this sensor. I'm going to have diagrams on my website, beckymarshall.com slash inflatables.html, link in the description box below. But the first thing I have to do is make the inflatable pillow. And I have already cut my form, I'm just going to make a simple rectangle today, but I do have a new tool to use. This little squeeze bottle, it's kind of like an accordion. The other thing that I have that I want to show you is this giant scepter of vinyl that I got. This costs like twelve dollars. <laughs> it's so much material. So I am going to make something big. Not today because I'm just testing something with my pressure sensor, but my next video you can expect something big. We'll see what it is. The other thing that I got that I'm excited to share, some tubing for my pump. Now I can inflate more large-scale things that won't be impeded by this little output right here. So I'm going to head to the spray booth, put on my safety gear, and make this little pillow with this pressure sensor sticking out of it like this. It's going to be strange. I hope I can achieve a good seal on it. We'll see. Okay, I have my prototype, this time with wires sticking out of it. I don't know if it's airtight, but we will figure it out when we inflate it. So I'm going to inflate it with a bit of an on and off motion from my pump, and we will see first if it holds air, and second what the pressure sensors say. So this is a very slow inflation. So far, the the pressure sensor readings are not doing anything interesting. I'm going to run the pump a little higher. You want to know what I just realized? This isn't connected to anything. <laughs> I didn't replace the pressure sensor. <laughs> so it was just a fake reading? Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm really tempted to like remove this from the video, but I kind of want to exhibit my shame. So, okay. Okay, so now for prototyping purposes, we have this sensor wired up to this breadboard. Just make sure I don't pop that. I forgot to plug it back in after I removed the power. All right, now it's having a reading. There's no difference in the pressure sensor. Hmm. I'm confused. Well, the good news is that my inflatable is airtight, including where the wires are sticking out. That is good news. Bad news is that the pressure sensor keeps giving the same neutral reading that it always has been, which means that there is probably something not right with the sensor um, and the way that I've hooked it up. So I'm going to have to deal with that. Hello again, it's another day and I'd like to follow up with how this squeeze bottle went. The glue did harden and dry uh, on the applicator end. and. You can see though that it is still viscous on the inside. So I lost some glue, you can see it covering this tip. But overall this is a win and I'm looking forward to using it again. I'm also going to test this other squeeze bottle. I think that this would have been more appropriate for the smaller scale prototype that I made on my last go. And here's the prototype. Here we have the valve, here we have the airtight seal, and here's my Arduino 
So let's inflate it and see what the pressure sensor reads. <laughs> oh, Jesus. What the? It is reading in the 400s and 500s. I'm going to try it at a much higher rate. It's deflating. Oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. Boom! <coughs> okay, so we are getting some different readings. Let's see what happens when I push it. Okay, it goes down. I'm going to let it go. So it's just noise. I do not understand. Okay, what happens if it's reading 500, 500, 500, 498, 500, and if I squish it, 496, 495. Okay, so it's registering my smush. If I let it go, it's back up to 500. No, it's back down. It's lower than it's been before. It's 485. This doesn't make it. It's back up to 500. Okay, this doesn't make any sense to me. All right, I'm going to release it. Mm, there doesn't seem to be any meaningful difference. Okay. Yeah. I cannot tell if the numbers are lowering because I'm smushing it or not. Something that I noticed off camera is that if I punch this inflated pillow, the pressure sensor gives me different kinds of readings. So let's smash it up. So it is varying wildly from the low 400s to the high 400s. Whoa. Oh wow, it jumped up. It jumped up to 650 when it came undone <coughs> unexpectedly. And then it went down to 370. We're getting a really wide range of readings on this. I'm being really mean to my pillow. And if I just let it rest, what does it do? It rests around 450 now. And what I'm realizing with all this testing of this pressure sensor is that I don't even know what I need the pressure sensor for. <laughs> so I think I've gotten it to work as well as it might work, but I'm going to move forward with prototyping different kinds of hardware. So what I want to do is I'm going to make a large form next I'm using my big vinyl roll. And then I'm going to make a raft type project where I'm going to lash together several long cylinders of inflated vinyl, lash together like a raft, put it afloat and see how it can bear weight. And I'll just leave this pressure sensor for future experiments. What I am very happy with is how much it kept this seal. This is a perfect seal. So here's the deal. What you've witnessed today is a bit of a failure. And if you ask anybody who's a designer, a failure is a big part of design. The pressure sensor was a lot of hard work to get it working even this well. And at this point, it just seems like a lot of noise and some major insights, but what I'm going to have to do in the future is set the pressure sensor up so that it doesn't touch the walls of the inflatable because I think that might be introducing a lot of the noise that we're seeing. I'm going to wait until later in the process to find out how I might want to use the sensor to keep working with it because this is just taking up way too much time. I'm comfortable with failure today. I learned a lot. I'm done with it. I hope you learned something from the video today. I'm really curious to hear how you guys find this video. So if you searched and found this video because of a project of yours, please share in the comments like what brought you here. I really want to hear about your projects. I'm trying to reach 100 subscribers by the time I graduate. So please be one of those 100. <laughs> like and subscribe. If you want to see the breadboard setup for the pressure sensor that I worked with today, look in the description box below and you will find a link to my website where I have diagrams and code set up for your use so you can recreate it. Cut. <laughs> oh, okay. That is going to have to be good enough.